All right, hello everyone. I'm really excited to have Mrs. Farissa Knox, as we mentioned before. She's here talking to us. Um, really great honor, great privilege. She's actually answering some questions for um, our Business 241 class, which is at Harold Washington. It's a finance course called Intro to Finance. Um, a lot of students put together some really great questions. So first, she's going to tell us something about herself and her business, and then just dive really deep into those questions, and then we'll be all set. Thanks, Zenfan. So as Zenfan said, uh, my name is Parisa Knox, and I'm an entrepreneur. I um, have two companies that I founded and, and continue to run. My first company is an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. It's called RLM Media. We do media planning and buying. Um, and basically what that is, is um, we, we look into the marketplace for our clients and figure out what's the best strategy to place advertising based on the, the product that they're trying to advertise and the person that they're trying to reach and the budget that they have to spend. And then figure out you know what's the best mix of media. Is it radio? Is it out of home? Is it print? Is it digital? Is it a combination of those things? And then put the plan together for them. And then um, once it's approved, we execute that plan in the marketplace. We place that media. Uh, we monitor the campaign throughout the course of the life of the campaign. We invoice it at the end of it. And then the hopes is that the cycle repeats itself over and over again um, because it was successful and there's additional products to advertise and whatnot. Um, that company will be eight years old this year in November. So I'm really proud of that. Um, and honestly, I'm still shocked every time I say it out loud that I've owned the company for eight years. Um, and the second company that I have, I started just a couple years ago. Um, it was in the works for a little while, but I think it was just two years ago that it actually got to the point where the consumer started to use it in the way that we intended them to use it. Um, it's called What Are You Wearing? The letter R and the letter U. And basically, we're a fashion digital brand. So on our website, we have an online magazine and we do um, all, all our original content between us in-house and some ambassadors that we have on different college campuses across the country. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a magazine that focuses on fashion and style and beauty stuff and lifestyle. And then we, we have an app that's available for free on iTunes that works a lot like Instagram. So um, people can upload their outfits, they can follow their favorite style you know, inspirations, they can keep track of their own clothes in their virtual closet. And we actually just launched a podcast also a couple weeks ago. We're on episode two. Uh, that's the most recent one. And we are having fun with the podcast. We're having little short 15-minute conversations with people um, that either have really cool jobs or, um, you know, are on Instagram and have like a million followers and everyone wants to know why. Like, what are you doing that you have a million followers and you're 22? Um, or, you know, just anything that we find interesting or that our audience honestly finds interesting, we bring those people on and we have like really cool, like, you know, Snapchatty group text type conversations with them and um, have a good time. So, anyway, that's me in a nutshell. And, like I'm fun said, I have a handful of questions that came in from your class and I kind of highlighted a couple of my favorites and I'll just kind of roll through them and, and answer them best I can. So the first question, the first two questions actually are from Daniel Tanner. Um, and the first one is, so how do you balance from being a successful entrepreneur, a mother and a wife? Um, I answer that question a lot and it's one of my favorite questions to answer because it gives like a good insight as to who I am as a person. Um, yeah, those three things are probably the three hardest things to be in life, <laughs> but the way that I focus and really am able to balance those three elements of myself is focusing on one at a time. So when I'm at work, I am 100% dedicated to being an entrepreneur, being a businesswoman, being a good leader, being a good boss to my employees, being a good um, you know, customer service agent to our clients and anything else that's needed of me. Um, thinking about you know, growing the company, what's the next steps and, and all of that. Um, when I'm at home and I'm with my kids, I am their mom. I'm dedicated to my two little girls. I'm not checking email constantly. I'm not, you know, 
trying to read articles about that kind of, you know, about work stuff. I'm focused on their needs and making sure that they know how much their mom loves them. And then same thing with my, my husband, my love life. You know, when we're together, um, when it, you know, the rare moments that we actually get where it's just the two of us, I try to just be in that moment and be focused and just give him 100% of my attention. I think that works so for like every element in life, you know, like when you're a young person and you live away from your family, when you're with them, you're with them and you're not like doing other things. You're focused with them and it's a good way for to let people know you care about them. Um, another question Daniel had was, how did your book Love, Sex and Friendship in No Particular Order come about? So that is a really cool story, um, the book and how it came about. Um, I was in my 20s, um, 10 years ago, and <laughs> decided, okay, this, my story of how I got into advertising, how I met my now husband, um, the friendship that I was both developing and growing with my best friend, um, my best female friend um, still today, was so intriguing by a lot of people when I was telling them, um, you know, different stories and aspects of it that um, someone encouraged me to just write it down. And I started, um, you know, now a little bit under 10 years ago, and then life got in the way. I got really busy with starting the first company, getting engaged, getting married, having kids, starting a second company. And then I looked up and someone reminded me, hey, you wrote a book. And it was funny and I went back and read it and I was like, well, I'll be the judge of that if it's funny. I went back and read it and it, it was, to my standards of okay, if this if I'm gonna put something out, then I need it to be you know at a certain level of good, of funny, of truth. Um, a lot, all of those things are important to me. So um, I decided to just take a shot and see you know what people thought about my real story. And so far, so good. People are you know they they like the book. They can relate to it because. My audience, my personal brand, and for what are you wearing is a you know a twenty-something-year-old who's either just getting started with school or just graduated from school, trying to figure out life. So at that point in my life, obviously it you know resonates really well right. with a lot of people that I come across. So and it's available on Amazon. So get it. Make sure to buy the book. Sure Amazon's read it, right? Yes. But he knows me and my husband personally. But you didn't know any of that because that was before I met you. Right, right. Yeah. Very good book. <laughs> Very good book. Make sure to buy it. Thank you. Okay, so the next set of questions comes from Kenya Miller. And her first question is, what is your management style? Um, that's so funny. I've never, it's funny to me because the person behind the camera is an employee <laughs> of mine. And I would be like, Kayleen, turn the camera around. What's my management <laughs> style? Um, she's had the privilege of working different um, positions here at the company, so she's kind of experienced a lot of it. But if I had to describe myself what my management style is, I would say um, I'm focused and um, friendly, but honest all the time. I you know, the good is highlighted, the bad is um, addressed, you know, it's not focused on, it's not, um, you know, no one's ever made to feel bad about themselves for making a mistake because people are people and they make mm -hmm. mistakes. Um, but I feel like a combination of honesty and openness too. I mean, I, I pride myself on being open with people who work here and work for me there's no like there's hardly a time where the doors close in, in, in anyone's office where it's like no you can't come in here you can't be a part of this conversation obviously there are things that you know upper management discuss and deal with because that's just how the world works but it's not um, you know no one's ever made to feel less than because no one is and I think that that's probably the main focus of my management style and teaching teaching is very important to me I love to like I always make the joke like if this were a hospital we would be like the um, Seattle whatever the hospital is in Grey's Anatomy like we're a teaching hospital because I like to find like budding talent that can you know really devour themselves into like 
whatever it is that we're doing and understand it and learn as they go and then become rock stars along the way. Um, so yeah, so that would be my management style. Um, second question from Kenya is, how do the social, economic, environmental, technological, legal, and political environments impact your business? Um, so obviously all of those things impact all businesses. I would say, you know, when the economy is bad, um, you know, that means consumers aren't spending money, right? So let's take a beverage company, Coke, for example. If people aren't um, making a lot of money at work or if they're out of work, then they're not spending as much money in the grocery stores or in the malls. So now Coke is making less money, so they're maybe spending less money in advertising, and so then companies like mine get, you know, smaller budgets to then go place their advertising. But we're expected to do, you know, the same or probably even more in a down period for less money, so that Coke can get yeah, back yeah. to where they feel comfortable. Um, so that would be, you know, one way that a business like mine would be affected. Um, but on the what are you wearing side, you know, that could make for some interesting content on the flip side. So, you know, when you're a senior in college and you're about to graduate and potentially find your first job um, and the economy is horrible, then you're trying to figure out what's the best way that you can stand out and, and you know, present yourself in a way to a future employer that they pick you over the competition. Um, and so we might find an interesting way on what are you wearing to write an article about that from our readers' perspective and helping them figure out, you know, the best way um, to, to show that maybe in your style and in your dress and when you walk in and how to set yourself apart that way in addition to all the smart things that you say in the interview and everything that's on your resume. Um, so yeah, it really depends on the type of business that you have, but political environment, you know, for advertising, for all ugliness that is, exists out there in politics, on TV and on radio, it's actually, it's like one of our most favorite time of the year because from an advertising perspective, there are millions and millions of dollars being spent on TV ads and radio ads. So just to be able to grab onto a small percentage of that for a boutique firm like mine is, is really profitable, so. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, let's see who's next. So Janine Williams um, had a couple questions. Her first one was, what was the moment you realized that you wanted your own business? Um, that's an interesting question to me because I never, I, I'm not one of those entrepreneurs that was like, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Like I, that was never my intention or my goal. I knew I wanted to be in charge, I wanted to run something, I wanted to be really good at whatever I did, I wanted to be one of the best at what I did, I just didn't know I would also own the company also. Um, but the first time that the idea actually came into my mind to work for myself was a conversation I was having with my husband, then he was my fiance, about um, just the current, that, it was 2008, so the economy, like that was the last time the economy was like at the bottom and the company I was working for was going bankrupt and there was just a ton of decisions that I was going to have to make and I was at a unique age where I was young enough to take another risk and you know if it didn't work out then I wouldn't have been that affected but also old enough to have a, like almost five years of experience doing what I had been doing. So I had relationships, I had experience, but I also had youth, so I could take a risk um, easily. And um, so he planted that seed of work for yourself in my head and I couldn't let go of it. So I just decided to try and see what would happen. But at that point, I still didn't consider myself an entrepreneur. I just thought, you know, I work for myself, I'm dedicated, I, you know, I can do this. But it, it was when I decided, okay, I can't do all of this by myself and have a life. I have to either grow this bigger than me, which includes employees and like, you know, everything that comes with owning a company, not just working for yourself, because those two things are very different. 
um, when I made the decision, I'm going to start hiring people and growing this and maintaining it. And when I became comfortable with that and what all that meant from, you know, everything, that's a whole nother like interview, but what all that means, that's when I said, okay, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a businesswoman and I can, you know, do this. Um, Janine's second question that I'll answer is, what is your advice to people who want to start their own businesses? Um, yeah, I think, honestly, you know, if you have a good idea and you have, um, you have the work ethic that it takes, um, then you're starting from a good place. I think a lot of times people start businesses for the wrong reasons. You know, they think that starting a business, you're going to be rich. Or the people who own businesses, everyone's just rich. That's not the reality. You know, you get rich from running a company for years and years and years, or selling a company, or having another company acquire your company. Just because you own a company and you have employees and you have clients doesn't mean you're rich. Um, you know, if you want to build something, if you want to... Um, you know, really leave a legacy, I would say that's why you start a business. So just just kind of entertaining your own thoughts around why you want to start a business is where I would start as advice to folks. And then to kind of go down like the spiritual route, because you kind of have to sometimes, just um, be willing to work harder than everyone else and keep going beyond the point where most people give up because those two things is what equals success. You know, most people, when it starts to get hard, they just stop. Or when it starts to get muddy, they're like, oh, I don't wanna get dirty. But the people who don't care about getting dirty and don't care about how hard work is um, are the ones that succeed. So you have to have that kind of grit <laughs> in you. Um, this student didn't, leave their name so I can't give you a shout out sorry but you'll know your question so their first question was from your personal experiences and establishing successful businesses do you think the best entrepreneurs are born with the niche to build an empire or do you think an entrepreneur can be created within the person so I like that question because it you know it piggybacks off the last one I just answered and I honestly I don't know. I guess there's a professional answer to that question and like um, my own like bias answer to that question. I think that for a good entrepreneur who is not, who, so there's two different, there's a couple different types of entrepreneurs. One who has an idea, wants to create it, but um, doesn't necessarily want to run a business or you know be in it they want to create it and they want to get rewarded for creating it and they want to go about their business and go on to the next thing that's a different kind of person than the type of entrepreneur that i am i'm um i'm like a nurturing entrepreneur i build a business i enjoy the process of getting it from an idea into my mind onto it's a reality it's a functioning business with employees and clients and readers and users and all of that but then I also like growing it, and I like nurturing the employees, and I like um, being a part of it. Um, that's not to say that ultimately, obviously, I would like to, you know, sell or merge or do something with with my companies one day that allows me to financially, you know, benefit from being an entrepreneur more than I already have, um, but not in a way that, oh, I'm just creating this this company to like get out of it. Um, so it depends on what kind of entrepreneur you are or are trying to be, um, you know, that will dictate if you're kind of born with it or not. Um, you know, having a good idea is a different skill set than um, running a well-functioning company. So I would say you know if you have it in you or not, to be honest. So when people spend a lot of time like going back and forth whether they want to do it or if they're scared or that then you're not an entrepreneur entrepreneurs just jump right in take the risk and do it because honestly the risk that other people see 
is just an opportunity for most entrepreneurs. So if you're not already organically thinking that way, then you probably have too much, like the fear is holding you back because the rest of it you can learn. You can learn accounting or you can hire accountants. You don't need to like, <laughs> right? You don't need to know all the aspects of running a company, but some of the stuff does need to be innate. Um, like how to ignore the fear. Um, and then the last question um, is still from this unknown student, and it is, in one of your quotes, you mentioned the next wave with the abundance of success, hard work, and dedication you've instilled into your brand. Would it be a fit for you to start a clothing line of your own while using your particular advertising and marketing expertise? Wow. Yeah. So I always like when people ask me questions about things that I'm secretly thinking about because I'm like, oh, okay, universe. Um, would I ever start a clothing line? Yes. When? I have no idea because just like everything else that I do from either a product or a brand perspective, it has to be the right time. And that's something that you learn as you build multiple companies and run them, that timing is everything. Right. So right now, where the Woody Wearing Company is at is not the right time for me, or even my personal brand, it's not the right time for me to like put out a product like that. Um, so could it happen one day? Absolutely. Have I thought about it? Yes. Um, but I'll know when the time is right, just like all the other things that I'm thinking about that are like in the back of my mind. So. Anyway, that's me. Secrets <laughs> out. Yeah. Secrets out now. So look for it. 2020. I don't know. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Any any other comments, last things, words of advice, bits of wisdom? No. Um, yeah. So just, I mean, honestly, the way that I think about life, and Infant already knows this, is just, you know, everybody can do whatever they want to do. about yourself and then put one foot in front of the other to actually make those steps a reality and then you'll start to really get um, addicted to progress like I'm addicted to progress I'm addicted to seeing things progress in the right direction so that keeps me going so moving forward yeah That's good. Well, thank you so much thanks I'm fine. thank you thank you